So today I'm going to attempt to document my head removal and taking the cams off and I'm going to be um, just disassembling today and I'll be replacing the rings while I'm in there. Compression is a little low on this engine and I see a lot of posts about this but never seen a a video log of it so I thought I might give it a shot here the reason I'm taking the head, head apart today is um, I went to change the oil recently and the front cam guide just uh, spit out of my oil drain plug on the bottom so I gotta go in there and replace the front cam chain guide since I'm gonna be in there I might as well do the rings and uh, we'll probably lap the valves as well check everything make sure it's that everything's in spec so this is the first installment of a video log I'll be hopefully splicing all these together into something legible for everybody to understand something um, somewhat organized I've already taken the points cover off and spark plugs so it's all ready to go got my 17 millimeter box wrench and first thing I'm gonna do is align the marks you can see right now I don't know if you can see it but the line is over there that's that line is for when you're adjusting your uh, measuring your valves adjusting the valves so that's not the mark I want so I'm gonna put it at top that center using uh, my 17, 17 millimeter box wrench and make sure the mark aligns which should be like a little arrow and that should align to the mating surface here of the valve cover to the head so here we go turn clockwise and we want to get one and four at top dead center here it comes T mark the line and, um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mark my uh, chain there with a grease pencil just for extra precaution now I don't know if you can see the mark on the on the gear there if you look on the right bolt there on the on the gear you may be able to see the mark right there between the bolt and the chain it's like a little arrow and that's what you want to have level with the mating surface of the valve cover to the head so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna mark it mark the chain just to be on the safe side because when we install that this chain back is gonna be very important and um, on this other gear the intake side you can see the 28 pin mark in other words when you count from the this mark over here, you're going to count the chain pins all the way towards the intake. You should have 20, you count 28 pins to that mark, and you'll know your cams are in timing. Once I take the upper gear off here, the guide, um, I'll count the pins before I disassemble it just to. Just for my own information, not that it matters, because I will be retiming the cams when I put them back together anyhow. Next step, what I want to do is take off the tachometer cable. Get that out of the way. And I already have the screw 
almost out. There it goes. And just pull the tachometer pinion gear out. There we go. And next step is to take the cam chain tensioner off. I already loosened the nuts. There's two bolts on this model. Um, they're, they're the same for other years, but um, the tensioners have changed in the design from throughout different years, so you'll want to check your manual on how to do this part. With uh, the early Z's up to uh, 78, I think, uh, they're pretty simple, they're not automatic. So I already took that bottom bolt off, take the top one off. and take the tensioner out it comes. and there's your cam chain tensioner next I'm removing the upper chain guide sprocket I've already loosened um, all the bolts as you can see, this side they're already taken out, and I got one left here. And if you're wondering what that material there is, foam material actually, um, I put it there so the I won't drop the bolt into the chain head cavity. Uh, they don't want to even take a chance. Just paranoia, not necessary. But here's the last bolt. Should be able to get it out. A little tight. Make sure I watch what I'm doing. I don't want to drop this bolt, that's for sure. And there she goes. So here's the upper chain guide sprocket. Just, I don't want those rubber. dampeners to fall in there either so make sure I held on to those and there you have it now we're at the point of taking the cams off and I unbolted all the cam cap bolts got one more left here and The last one. Let's go over to the other side here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start picking the caps off. You can use a rubber hand mallet and just give it a little whack. Going. There we go. Now this one's ready to go. There we are. And I want to be able to. Uh, want to make sure you know they're not they're in good shape uh, in case I have to replace any. But anyway, I gotta. Take the other three cam caps off the same way and then I'll pull uh, the cams out. And I already have a wire getting ready to be able to hold my uh, cam chain, keep it from falling. Well, it's never easy. This last cap is giving me trouble, so I rubber mallet didn't work on this one, but I'm pounding on it. So finally just use the old standby piece of wood and hammer. Keep the 
bearing. are off and I just pull the cams out. So the exhaust cam is out. Now I'm just a matter of taking the intake cam. This is not be easy. Alright. Next step is taking the 10 millimeter head bolts from um, each side of the head and then taking off all the head 14 millimeter head bolts. Got them all off here. So the head is ready to come off. I need to take these shims out so they don't get, go all over the place. And on to the next step. Okay, uh, I've been taking out all the shims and buckets, and uh, this is the easiest way I found to take them out. And you want to make sure that you don't mix these up. Um, first, take the shim, and then with a needle nose, grab the little edge there, and the bucket comes right out. And that's the easiest way. But you gotta keep these shims and buckets together for assembly purposes. And right here, I made a head carton, Martin exhaust intake, and this one was the intake number two. So we'll keep them in order. And that's all there is to that. Now on to the next step. Okay, so now I'm at the point where I want to take off the head and it's usually going to be cooked on there and what I did was tapped it gently with a rubber mallet very gently on here just to get it moving a little bit anyway I broke it free so now I can lift it a little bit as you can see and I just gotta pull it out and uh, I'll be able to take a look and see if all this trouble was necessary. Um, the reason I'm doing all, all this is because I front cam idler um, is uh, broke off and um, it came out of the oil plug. Okay, so a little improvising. I uh, shimmied the head up, the studs, and I just need to take it off now, but I need to get past the chain. So I tied another wire, you can see it here, I don't know if you can see it, to the chain to keep it up. Got it on both sides here. So. That'll keep the chain from falling.